Hello coders, I'm Matt Landers with Covalence and in this video we're going to talk about how to use MySQL with Node.js. Uh, so we're going to create a API that calls um, a database and pulls back some blogs. We'll pull back all the blogs and then do one that pulls back one blog. So it's going to be really simple. Um, we're just going to hook that up and I'll show you how it works with MySQL. All right, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to clone a repo. So I'm going to make a directory, uh, mysql-node. I'm going to go in there, and then I'm going to clone our starter template that uses TypeScript, Express, Node, React, SAS, but we're only going to use the back end for this one. Uh, so I'm going to clone it into this directory. Having some typing issues here. All right, and then I'm gonna remove git from it. And I'll npm install. Just gonna do this from scratch, just like you will. So this project may change a little bit in the time that you do it, but it should be relatively the same. Uh, I'm gonna install MySQL, cause it's not in there by default. And I'm gonna install the types for MySQL for TypeScript. And then we'll just go ahead and get this running and we'll go hook up our database. <clears throat> so I have npm run dev, and this will be watching everything. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and get a development window open here. I've got a local host to just say hello world, and then we'll test out the API, which you can do slash API slash hello. And it should come back with world right now, just so that you know that everything is working. All right, so let's go hook this up. So we're going to go open that folder and we're going to hook up our database so the first thing that i'm going to do is create a folder called db this is where we're going to create a couple of files first i'm going to create an index.ts and i'm going to create a blogs.ts so what i usually do this is just a pattern that is really simple to implement uh, but i create a folder the index will let us reference that folder uh, and then it will export all the different tables. So I create a different file for every table. So one of our file or one of our tables is blogs, which is what we have here. Uh, and I'm gonna create a table and name that. So let's go ahead and start hooking this up. So we're gonna import star as MySQL from MySQL. Uh, and then we need to create a connection. So what we're gonna do is export const connection. And we'll do mysql.createConnection. And in here, we just got to pass in whatever our connection parameters are. Now, whenever you're doing this, you might not want to store your password and everything in your code. But for this example, I'm going to do it. We have other videos that tell you how to abstract your config from your code. So that you'll end up checking that into GitHub or something like that, uh, which would be really bad because then your password is out there for everyone to see. So we're going to do host, local host. We're going to do port uh, 3306, uh, user, I have one called blog, and then my password, blah, blah. That's what I use for examples. And the database is named blog. All right, so now we have a connection. And we're also going to have an export default here where we're going to export all of the tables once they're here. I uh, don't have that yet. Uh, and we're going to create a little helper function called query. That This is going to make all of our queries to the database. So all of our tables, our files that have the tables in them, will use this query. So it's just going to be a function. And it can take the query as a string. And it can take uh, values as an array of either strings or numbers. And that's it. All right, so the way that MySQL works is that it um, uses callbacks. So the reason that I wanna abstract everything into this query is that otherwise you have to create your own promise all the time to do asynchronous communication, which you're gonna see right here. So we're gonna return a new promise and the promise is gonna return an array. We're just gonna put any here because we don't know what might be returned. Uh, so we have a resolve and a reject function. 
We have another video on how to create promises, so I'm not going to go into exactly how these promises work, but it's just a normal promise. Uh, and then here's where we're going to call the database. So we're going to do uh, connection.query. We're going to pass in the query that we got, put our values in here, and then there's this callback where we get an error and our results. So we don't want to use callback, so we're wrapping this callback in a promise, and then we can use async await everywhere that we use the query. Now it might be tempting to put an async here, but we don't need to because we're returning a promise already. Uh, so now we're going to check, and if there's an error, we want to return reject the error. So we just want to exit this function, uh, and if there's no error, then we're just going to resolve uh, with the results. All right, so there we go. We have that little helper function set up. Now let's go into our blog where we're going to import our query. Import query from dot slash index where we just created it. Then in here we can have all of our functions that we want to make available uh, related to the blogs table. So now this becomes really, really simple. So we're going to say const all equals async. Um, and since we're getting all, we're not going to pass any parameters in here. And we actually don't even need this. This is really, really simple. We're just going to say query uh, select star from blogs. And that's it. Oh, I need to change my query real quick. This is an optional value. We don't always have to pass values in. So that'll fix that. All right, and so the, all I did there in TypeScript, I just put this little question mark here. That means that that parameter is optional. Um, all right, so now we have all, and then we're gonna export default, and we're just gonna export this function. And we'll add another function here in a minute, but let's make sure everything's working. Uh, then in here, in our index, we're going to import blog, blogs. Wow. And it just comes from blogs, it has a default, and then we're gonna export that. So our default that we're gonna export are all of our different tables. And you'll see why this is handy in a minute. You could go import every individual table, but you're not gonna to wanna to do that every single time. So, especially if you have a lot of tables. So what we'll do here is say router.get um, API slash blogs. So this will be our where we go get all of our blogs. And then we want this to be async. And we want to import our DB. So let's do this, import DB from that directory, which will default to the index. And then we want to have a try catch because we're going to use async await. And here we're going to console log the error uh, and then just send back a 500. All right. And then what we want to do here is say response.json uh, and we'll do await uh, db.blogs.all. And there we go. That should be all that we need. So I'm going to go back over here. It did compile. Okay. Uh, we'll go to our API and say slash blogs, and there are all of our blogs. So really simply, we've been able to connect to our database, make a query to our database, and then return that as part of the API and JSON. So let's just do one more little example of pulling back one. Um, because our query, we take in two parameters, the string and the values, um, and we're passing them in here uh, to the query. So the way that this works is that you give it the query string and then any question marks will be replaced by the values in the order they are in the array. Uh, so let's go ahead and do one. So we're gonna call it one, the async, and the query will be almost the same. So select star from blogs where id equals question mark and then we're going to pass in 
uh, an ID. And that ID needs to be passed into here as well. So we'll do ID colon number. And then we want to attach that to our default export. So now what happens, we can call this, pass in an ID, which will come in through our route. And then we'll replace that in the query with the way that my SQL works in the connection uh, with the parameters. And we'll just pull back that one. Now let's go create our API route for this. Now these routes would start to stack up and you'd want to refactor this and put them in their own directory or something similar to how we did DB. Uh, but for this example, we're just gonna make it really simple. So the difference here is that we're gonna have a parameter. Uh, instead of calling one here, we're going to grab that parameter. So request.params.id. And we also don't, it's gonna return an array, MySQL is, but since we're only grabbing one, we're using the ID here, we can go ahead and wrap this and pull out the first record. Like so. So we're just saying when it comes back, it's gonna be an array, grab the first one, because we know there's only gonna be one. All right, so I'll save this. Should have compiled and it did. When I go back, I'm gonna change this to ID one. And there we go, we just pull back that first blog post. And you'll see it's not in an array now, so it'd be really easy to consume this on the React side. We just go grab that blog, and then it's gonna pull back a nice JSON of what our uh, table looks like. And we can bind that to our, to our visual. And that's it, that's pretty simple. So if I put in two, I can pull back the other one. And if I put in one that doesn't exist, I'll get an error that came back be in our network and it just didn't send anything back um but i guess because nothing came back there really was no error there's just no blog for that so all right so that's it for this example really quick how to hook up your mysql database to a node.js application uh, and to abstract some of that uh, into a query that we can use to make all of our queries. All right, go out, do the lab, get some practice and do this. And then in the next section, we're gonna talk about how to hook it all up with React as well. So we'll kind of go through this again and see it uh, again, but go ahead and start playing with it and do the lab and we'll see you soon. Bye.